Hi everyone, it's Alec from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can build simple Go applications that can interact with RabbitMQ brokers. Now this topic was the most requested in a poll that I put out this week on the channel so I'd just like to say thanks to everyone that voted in that and I am aware that the Go GRPC part 2 video was also very highly requested so expect a video on that in the coming weeks. Cool, so let's take a look at what we're going to be covering in this tutorial. So we're going to start off by covering the basics of RabbitMQ and the theory of why you should use message brokers in your distributed applications. We're then going to be looking at how you can set up a simple RabbitMQ instance locally using the Docker tool. And then once we've got that set up, we're going to look at how you can create a simple Go app that can connect to and publish messages to this RabbitMQ instance. And then finally, we're going to have to look at how we can consume those messages from that test queue that we're going to be building using another Go application. Now let's start off with what is RabbitMQ. Now RabbitMQ is one of the most popular open source message brokers from the lovely folks over at Pivotal. Now it's an incredibly lightweight and easy to deploy message broker that supports a range of different messaging protocols and has a whole host of different features that are incredibly helpful when it comes to messaging. It is without a doubt one of the most popular messaging brokers out there at the moment and it can easily be distributed across multiple availability zones and regions to help ensure high availability of the service. So why do we use message brokers? Well, using message brokers allows us as developers to implement more resilient distributed systems that are able to handle parts of the application going down. Let's take for an example, the diagram we've got in front of us. Now, imagine we have a system that processes credit card transactions. You want these systems to be as resilient as possible and ensure that no transactions are lost should the backend server that processes these requests go down for any reason. You also want to minimize the impact to clients should this happen. And you may not want to flat out reject any incoming requests while your backend systems are down. So this is where message brokers come in to solve the problem. Now using RabbitMQ, we can effectively decouple both our backend and our front end applications. And in this example, we've made it, been able to solve this particular issue by having a queue within our RabbitMQ instance, which our clients are able to publish events to, and then our backend servers are able to process them when they do come back online. So what are some of the advantages of doing it this way? Well, for one, we can increase the reliability and the fault tolerance of our applications by designing it to communicate with RabbitMQ queues as opposed to have having direct one-to-one -one communication. Now we can also use dead letter queues. So imagine you've got a client application that sends a, a JSON message to our RabbitMQ queue, which doesn't quite fit the schema and our backend application isn't able to process it. In that case, we can publish it to a dead letter queue and our engineering teams or our operations teams can then look at these dead letter queue messages to see why they have failed to get processed. Now, Another advantage is it also allows us to decouple services and we don't have to implement point-to-point -point, um, communication between like hundreds of different microservices, which is hugely important in distributed systems. Cool, so now that we've covered some of the basic theory as to why you should use message brokers in your distributed system designs, let's have a look now at diving into some of the code and writing applications that can publish to and process messages from a RabbitMQ queue. Cool, so I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna open up the terminal in which I'm going to kick off a locally running instance of RabbitMQ using the docker command. So I'm going to run docker run detached. I'm going to give a host name of my rabbit and a name of some, some rabbit. I'm going to map the port 15672 to 15672 for the management console. And I'm going to map 5672 to 5672 which is the port that the RabbitMQ service actually runs across. Then we're gonna use the image RabbitMQ3 management, like so. Now this will kick off a locally running instance of RabbitMQ that we can then log into using localhost 15672 using the username guest and the password guest. Let's try that now. So let's open up Google Chrome and let's try guest and guest. Perfect. As you can see, we've got full access to the backend admin dashboard for our RabbitMQ instance, which is up and running. So with this in place, let's start diving in and writing some Go code. Now I'm going to create a new file within my current directory and I'm going to call it main.go. 
And we're going to start off with a really simple placeholder application. So I'm going to do func main fmt.printline go rabbit mq tutorial, like so. In the root of the project directory, I'm also going to initialize the project to use Go modules by calling go mod init github.com slash tutorial edge slash go rabbit mq tutorial. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to import the package that we're going to be using to interact with a rabbit mq instance. Now this is going to be github.com slash streadway. And we're going to use AMQP, which is the Advanced Message Queuing Protocol package. Cool. Within the body of our main function, we then want to do the following. So we want to do connection or error is equal to amqp.dial. And then we're going to use the AMQP protocol using guest and guest as our admin credentials. And then localhost and it's 5672, like so. As we're getting an error, we want to check to see if this has been assigned a value. So we want to fmt.printline the error and we're going to panic if there is an error. And because we're opening a connection, we want to ensure that we are tidy and we close this connection at the end of our application's execution. So we're going to call defer con or connection.close like so. Now just below this, we're going to do fmt.printline successfully connected to our rabbit MQ instance. And with everything in place, we can then try and run this using go run main.go. This is going to go away, get the packages needed to compile our application. And then as you can see, it's printed out the first print line statement at the top here. It's then been able to successfully get a connection and then finally print out the successfully connected to our RabbitMQ instance statement. Cool. So now that we've been able to successfully verify that we can connect to this RabbitMQ instance, let's try creating a queue and creating some messages on this queue. So the first thing we're going to do just below where we've defined this print line statement is do the following. So what we want to do channel or ch or error is equal to connection.channel. Now channel, as you can see here, opens a unique concurrent server channel to process the bulk of AMQP messages. Now this effectively lets us interact with our RabbitMQ instance. So channel or error is equal to connection.channel. And if error does not equal nil, then we want to do panic error. And we also want to print line the error like so. Again, as we're opening something, a connection to the RabbitMQ instance, let's do the fair channel.close to keep ourselves nice and tidy. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is to declare a new queue on this RabbitMQ instance. So we want to do queue or error is equal to channel.queue declare. And as you can see from the definition, queue declare declares a queue to hold messages and deliver to consumers. Um, declaring it creates a queue if it doesn't already exist or ensures that the existing queue matches the same parameters, which is perfect for what we need. So we're going to give this a name test queue. Um, we don't want it to be durable for now. We don't want it to auto delete. We don't want it to be exclusive. Um, we don't want it to wait. And we want to pass in no additional arguments on top of this. Cool. So let's check to see if there was any errors creating this queue. So fmd.printline error. And once again, we're going to panic. And then just to get some information on our queue, we're going to print it out like so. Cool. With this queue now declared, let's try and publish a message to it. So we can do that in the same function by calling error is equal to channel.publish. And publish effectively sends a message from the client to an exchange on the server. So exchange is going to be now. The key is going to be test queue. We're going to have it mandatory false. Uh, we're going to have immediate false. And amqp.publishing. 
and this is going to have the content type text plain and the body of this message is going to be the following so we're going to have a byte array which will have hello world like so cool now let's see if we were successful by checking for the error so if error does not equal nil then fmt.println the error or panic error and then finally we want to do the following so print line successfully successfully published message to the queue cool so with that in place let's try that now by calling go run main.go once again and as you can see it's been able to successfully publish a message to the queue and if we run this again we should see that the number of messages on this queue increments every time we run it Perfect. So before we dive into creating the consumer Go application, let's dive into the backend dashboard for our queue. Now, as you can see here that the number of messages on the queue has incremented to six in total. And we can see other things like the message rate. So how many messages are published per second? And then we can see how many are unroutable, which is all really cool. Now with this in place, let's dive back into Visual Studio Code and create the consumer.go application that's going to consume these messages that we've just published to the queue. Now we're going to start off with package main once again, and we're going to do the following. So import and fmt github.com slash streadway once again, amqp, and then we're going to do punk main. And then within this, we're going to do, once again, create a connection to our RabbitMQ instance and then create a channel. So fmt.println uh, consumer application. So connection or error is equal to amqp.dial. Once again, passing amqp guest guest at localhost. Oops. And the port number is 5672. Let's check for the error. So if error does not equal nil, fmt.println error or panic with the error. And then we defer the connection.close once again. And then we can declare our channel. So channel or error is equal to connection.channel. If error does not equal nil, fmt.println error or panic and the fair channel.close and then what we're going to do we're going to do messages or error is equal to channel.consume now consume immediately starts delivering queued messages to our application here so we want to do the following so we want to pass in the queue that we're going to be connecting to which is called test queue which we instantiated in the main.go file we are going to pass in an empty consumer string um, we want to auto acknowledge that we've consumed this. Uh, we want false, 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 and nil finally. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is actually process the messages that we consume from this channel. So we're going to create a channel called forever, which is going to block the execution of our main.go function until it receives a value and it's going to be make channel bill. We're then going to define a go function or go routine. And within this, we're going to do for D and range messages. We want to do fmt.print f received message. And we want to pass in the message body like so. Cool. We then want to do the following. So fmt.println successfully connected to our rabbit MQ instance and fmt.println we're going to have a wee notification saying it's waiting, waiting for messages like so. And then finally, we're going to call receive on the channel that we've created so that it blocks the main function from exi exiting. 
Now in the terminal I'm going to split this into two and I'm going to cut, kick off the consumer by calling go run consumer.go which as you can see successfully connects to our RabbitMQ instance and then starts processing the six messages that we have published to this test queue. Now we can test to see if this works by publishing more messages and as you can see on the right hand side the consumer application continues to process these messages as they are published. Cool, so that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Now in this tutorial we've been able to create a locally running instance of RabbitMQ. We've then been able to create two distinct Go applications that are able to both publish to and subscribe from that queue. And we've also looked at some of the basic theory as to why you should use message broker technologies within your distributed system design. Now before you go, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. And if you're interested, I've started publishing daily Go challenges which are designed to help teach you various aspects of Go as well as data structures and mathematical problems onto my website. I'll leave a link to the, that in the description below. And I'd also like to say a, th a special thanks to my Patreon subscribers, uh, Dan J and Sayok Boss, as well as Greg Gallagher and the two other anonymous donors that have generously bought me coffees this month. It means a lot. Thanks a lot for doing that. Now, just to end it, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.